What's up everybody, Dan Martell here, serial entrepreneur, investor, creator of SaaS Academy. And in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how to manage an agency without wasting your money. So maybe you have a contractor, you've been working with somebody helping you with marketing, you just don't feel like it's getting you the kind of results that you need. I'm gonna share with you in this video how to rectify that and bring things to a level where they're producing on a week over week basis. And be sure to stay at the end, we're gonna share with you how to get my agency planner worksheet, which is gonna get you crystal clear on the expectations, the accountability, and then how to schedule those activities into your week. Let's get started. So as you can probably tell, I'm in the new studio. Um, it's really cool. Uh, it was definitely my wife's input and uh, honestly labor. She's the creative in the family. And um, what's fun, most people will not know this because I'm only gonna share this once. So if you're watching this, you're gonna be in on the inside scoop. Um, that backdrop, not only, and this is real, this isn't like, um, I don't know, one of those fake backdrops. Uh, it has incorporated into it my logo, but even more interesting is my wife's logo. So she's got a new project she's launching called We Wild Women, and it's in there as well. That being said, let's get back to the video. Um, a while ago, I was on a coaching call with one of my uh, clients, and they were frustrated with their marketing. When I dug in, I found out they were working with an agency. And the issue was is they didn't feel like the agency was producing to the level that they needed to hit their revenue targets. And uh, as I asked more questions, I found out a few things that were concerning. One, um, the reporting from the agency was essentially an email every two weeks letting them know how their ads had been running. So that's interesting, I'll tell you why in a sec. And then the second thing was that um, the thing they were measuring in regards to leads was not actually driving revenue. So an email address is not an opportunity and so what I did is I, I kind of walked them backwards because I work with several agencies in my businesses. I have several businesses and I have a very structured approach to ensuring that they, they produce because at the end of the day, it's very expensive to have somebody else. It's, it's concerning, it's scary. If what if they don't deliver? I really need this as critical path for revenue. And once I showed them that, one of my clients, Noah said, hey, we should call this the agency amplifier um, because he had never heard it before. So I'm gonna share with you the agency amplifier, the five key principles to make sure that you get the most from your contractors or agencies. Number one, give them the goods. So if you're working with an agency, the first thing I would encourage you to do is before you even engage them is document everything that you've got inside your business that they might need so that they can be more productive. So this means if you're doing, for example, Facebook ads, you want to grab your avatar information, your branding guidelines, any past ads that you've ran in the past that have worked, um, any copy, landing pages, funnels, et cetera. You wanna grab all the goods, all the resources, everything that you can present to your contractor your agency so that they can essentially get a body of work to dive into the specific um, elements that they're gonna need to design or develop to be successful with you. So number one is to just categorize that and give them the goods. Number two, baseline metrics. So one of the things that I teach, is called the high performance triangle. You know, there's three core areas. Number one is outcomes, two is accountability, and three is measure. I'm really speaking to the measure side right now because if you don't baseline where you're at, so again, Facebook ads, if you don't have um, some level of understanding of what you're paying for a lead right now or paying for a trial or paying for a demo, then how can we ask somebody else to make something better, right? I don't wanna say, hey, you tell me what's good. I wanna say, here's what we're currently doing. You know, We're gonna work together and co-create a better process that's gonna get a better results. So usually the first thing is we need to baseline the metrics to figure out where we're at so that we can then work with them to set some new targets. Usually every two weeks I wanna get you know 10 to 15, maybe 20% better so that we're iterating and iterating and iterating um, to get to a better baseline. So we always wanna have our control, which is what we're doing today. Then we wanna split test against that control. And if we're making progress, then we change the control to the new winning funnels, designs, this is all marketing context, but the th same thing works for outbound sales or for hiring somebody to do a PR for you. We always want to figure out what is the key metric that we're gonna measure to ensure that we're making progress with our agency. Number three, meeting rhythms. So. Fun fact, rhythm is spelled with an H, R, H. I always screw it up every time I type it. I don't know why, it just never comes to me. Um, side tangent over, 
if you are not having a weekly meeting with your agency to review what they've done in the past, what they plan on doing, and some key discussions in regards to things you're learning in your organization, then you're missing an incredible opportunity to iterate better and more effectively. I mean, at the end of the day, if every week you're probably learning more about your customers, their challenges, the language they're using, and if we don't extract that and have a weekly sync with our agency, it can be 15 minutes, ideally 30, where they're presenting to us the results of their efforts, we're talking about our goals for the next week and we're getting clear and setting accountability around that. And then having the opportunity to share that with them, you know, the internal learnings so that they can get better and faster, I think that's just really crazy. And a lot of agencies may not want that. I'm gonna highly encourage that you put that as part of the deal from the beginning. You may be the only client that they have that requests this, but it will change the game from having an agency relationship that's mediocre to one that is world class. Number four, resource the project. So just because you hire an agency to do the work, I think it's it's not fair to them and you're definitely gonna be on the losing end of this if you expect them to do all the heavy lifting and not give them any resources from your internal team. Here's what I mean. Again, using the Facebook as an example, if I'm gonna ask, uh, an agency to run Facebook ads and I have a designer on staff, I need to make sure that the designer is introduced to that agency and they're made aware that they can leverage my designer to produce designs that are on brand and, and, and iterate faster, right? So, so there's a lot of times where it doesn't matter if we're working on copy projects, PR, sales, outbound sales, et cetera, that your internal team can help agencies move faster and it's in your best interest to make sure that those parties are on the call, the introductions are made, and that you're, you're clear about routing certain questions to those people so that they can support the agency to be better. Now this does not take away from the fact that they're supposed to be doing some of this work, so if they're on the hook to produce the imagery, great, but just make sure that there's some kind of connection with your designer, your brand guidelines, so that they don't produce stuff that might embarrass you or that'll just miss the mark because it's not attracting the right customer. So resourcing the project with the agency from your internal staff is also a critical step that's usually missed with a lot of people outsourcing their work. Number five, DRI. It's one of my favorite acronyms. Uh, it stands for Direct Responsible Individual. Uh, I got this from, I don't know where I read this, but Steve Jobs was famous for this, that in everything they do from you know, the iPhone launch to every product innovation to marketing campaigns, every key outcome or project had a DRI. Somebody was one person accountable for achieving that outcome. And I just think it's so critical that when we sit down with our agency and we talk about you know, specific outcomes and iterations, if you're meeting every week and you're, you're trying to iterate around a marketing funnel or, or a PR message or outreach, that everybody is crystal clear who is DRI. Both DRI on the agency side in regards to them driving that outcome forward, but more importantly, even internally. So most uh, agency relationships don't have an internal champion uh, to connect with. Ideally, it's not you. If you're the founder, you should delegate it to somebody on your team. If you have an exec leadership team, you know, around customer success and marketing and sales and, you know, ops and admin, have somebody, whoever that agency is most, um, you know, alike or doing the work for to be DRI for that agency. So that way you can hold that person internal to your team accountable for the agency's output. So to me, uh, there is no projects, no outcomes that don't have a DRI because that is where, when I talked again to the high performance triangle, accountability is key. Understanding who is gonna be accountable for sending what, for supporting it, for scheduling the meetings, for holding them accountable to those metrics. Um, that's how we're gonna have forward movement in our agency relationship. So quick recap, five key strategies to manage your agency or contractors without wasting money or time. Number one, give them the goods, all your resources. Number two, baseline the metrics so we know where we're at today and where we're going. Three, meeting rhythms at least weekly. Four, resource project with internal resources if you have them. And five, DRI, ensure somebody on your team is accountable for that agency relationship. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I wanna share with you an exclusive resource called the Agency Planner Worksheet. You can click the link below to grab your copy. In it, I walk you through the audit of your current agencies, the key metrics that you, and I have a bunch of different categories depending on the agencies that you want to consider holding those people accountable to, the internal resources that you have 
that you can give to them so that they can be even more performant. And also, once we have that, we want to then lock in those meetings in a calendar throughout the week. And I've got a little calendar interface where you can map once you audit your agencies into the week and give accountability for whoever on your team is gonna hold them accountable. So you can click the link below to grab your copy of that planner. And as per usual, if you know somebody that could be served by this video, feel free to share it with them directly. Smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And I wanna make sure that I challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business. And I'll see you next Monday. Uh, do you wanna move your cup or is it already it's in the shot? Yeah, no, I think it's fun to be in the shot. Okay, cool. It's got my logo on it.